Hey everybody out there in YouTube land, this is Miss Scott with a video on how to read solubility curves. Let's start by defining what a solubility curve is and its purpose. The solubility curve that you see before you shows us how much solute we can dissolve in a certain amount of solvent at a given temperature. So as you can see, these, each of these individual lines represents a different compound. And as temperature changes, the amount, the amount changes as well. All right. So when we look at these, the nice things about solubility graphs is we can use them to describe a certain solution as one of these three things, either being saturated, unsaturated, or supersaturated. If you have a saturated solution, what that means is you have as much solute in the solvent as possible and it's still, and all of it is dissolved. So you can't add any more, but everything is gonna fully dissolve. So an example of this would be, you could pick any point on any one of these lines. I'm gonna pick this point right here. So I can use that, I can say, all right, what would I need to make a saturated solution? By drawing a straight line down, I can see what temperature I'm dealing with. So this is a solution that's been made at 30 degrees Celsius with, if I go over to the y-axis, this is a solution that has about, I would say, 97-ish grams of solute. So 97 grams of this substance, which is NaNO3, sodium nitrate, 97 grams of that at 30 degrees in 100 grams of water will fully dissolve. That's a saturated solution. An unsaturated solution, you're gonna have a point that's going to be under the line that you're comparing it to. So let's say I had the same amount of solute here and I just heated the solution up to, let's say 50 degrees. So 50 degrees, I'm gonna go straight up. I'm gonna assume I still have 97 grams of solute, so I would go straight over from 97, continue to go over, and there's my point. So you'll note this point is no longer on this line that I'm comparing it to. And all this means is I can add, I can add more solute, and that solute can be dissolved. More solute. And you could figure out mathematically just by subtracting how much more could I add. I could add from 97, it looks like to make it saturated, it would need to be about 115. So about 18 more grams can be added before it becomes saturated. Now our last description of solutions is super saturated and super means over and that's all it is, it's over the line. And this happens, this could happen if you take a solution and you cool it down So let's take our, da, 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 we'll do a dotted line. We'll pick a point. Let's pick a point right here. That's a good point. All right. So if I want to describe what conditions I have for this solution, again, you go straight down to the x-axis to see your temperature. So this is at 10 degrees Celsius with 140 grams of solute of potassium iodide that's over that line. It's over all these lines. So this is super saturated. And what that means is you have exceeded the amount of solution that, or excuse me, the amount of solute that can be dissolved. So you will have ex excess or extra left over. So here at 10 degrees, I'm only able to dissolve, it looks like about 134 five grams of solute. So these extra five grams are going to remain undissolved as a precipitate. All right, let's do a couple practice problems here. So you might not always, so you could, if you're given two numbers, a solute and a temperature, you can use that to find what kind of solution. Sometimes it'll ask you though to find a temperature or an amount such as this one, at what temperature will 20 grams of SO2 
dissolve that. So what you do for these kinds of problems, you find the line that you're wanting to compare to. SO2 is down here. This one is interesting in that it decreases The solubility decreases as temperature increases. And then you find the number that you're given. So we're given 20 grams. And we want to know what temperature I need to get all that dissolved. So I need a saturated solution. So I find 20 grams. I go straight over. The line is right here. From that point to find my answer, I go straight down to the other axis. And that looks to be about maybe 5 degrees Celsius. So at 5 degrees Celsius, I can fully dissolve 20 grams of SO2.